Cinderella's are anything that looks like a postage stamp, but it isn't. They're stamp-like objects that have served other purposes than legitimately delivering the mail in a postal system. And because they look like stamps, they often ended up in stamp collectors' albums by mistake. And this can include fakes and forgeries that were looking to defraud the postal system or the stamp collector. A lot of Cinderella's are actually labels instead of stamps. And in the 1870s, these labels became known as album weeds and it was discouraged from being in collections or stamp exhibits. So it was encouraged that the young philatelist go into their stamp album and identify these album weeds and have them plucked out of their collections and discarded. And this was until many years later when collectors began to recognize the beauty of these items. They were often more elaborate than postage stamps and they provided a different perspective to learn about. So in a very short time, these album weeds began to be recognized for their beauty and Cinderella Philately was born. Oh, you get why they're called Cinderella's, right? After the fairy tale where Cinderella isn't allowed to go to the ball by her stepsisters, but by the end of the tale, her beauty is recognized and she becomes star of the show. Just like these Cinderella's. Now, this isn't a Cinderella stamp. Well, it's a stamp of Cinderella. It's it's a Cinderella stamp. It's a real postage stamp. This isn't a Cinderella. It, it is. So let's take a look at different types of Cinderella's with the examples that I have. Starting with this revenue label or stamp. These are also known as fiscal stamps or tax stamps. And they're applied to any object to indicate that tax has been paid. They're usually issued by the government. And you can see in this case, this is the United States Internal Revenue. Other type of revenue stamps could be like cigarette stamps, medicine stamps, or royalty stamps. Now, here's one from a bygone era, a telegraph stamp. These were used to mark service fees in sending telegrams. Telegraph stamps were, of course, only issued by countries that had telegraph lines set up. Airmail labels. Now, not airmail stamps with an actual value on it, but just the label that's indicating an envelope or a package needing to be transported via air. Here's some registration labels, which were, of course, for registered mail. You can't get too much excitement from these, except trying to figure out, like, where Mengamuka Bridge is. Which I'm going to say is Thailand. <coughs> no, it's New Zealand. Never mind. Now, this is an interesting one. This is a hovercraft label or stamp. And I was actually looking for railroad labels, which I don't see any examples here. But they were far more common where you needed to indicate if a parcel or envelope needed to be sent via rail. This is similar, except it's using a passenger hovercraft in Great Britain. These are fun ones. These are poster labels. And these Cinderella's were created to pretty much advertise a product or an event or services. They look like miniature posters, and most of them are reduced versions of the actual banner uh, that was used. They are very interesting to find, and you will come across a number of them advertising services or products that you've never even heard of before. Now, what's related to the poster label are these ones, which are propaganda labels. And just like poster labels, these were promoting an idea or demonstrating support. They were usually issued by governments. And these can be some of the most graphic and interesting to see. Of course, the ones that I found are all from World War II. Next up, we have philatelic exhibition seals. And these philatelic labels serve as souvenirs for stamp events. Stamp collectors love to collect them because of their direct connection to their favorite hobby, of course. Now, these are big ones. These ones you'll see everywhere. These are charity seals, and they're sold by charitable organizations to raise funds for various causes. The common examples that I found are Christmas seals, which are sold during the holidays to complement greeting cards. The most common of these seals is to raise funds for the fight against tuberculosis. This double cross here is known as the Cross of Lorraine. It's a symbol that was adopted for the anti-tuberculosis fund. And you'll literally find them on Christmas seals all around the world. Now, a few quick mentions to point out that I've noticed here are these Kansas quail stamps, which are proof of a hunting license. Or these stamps issued by local postal services. Here's a happy birthday label that just went on an envelope. And I've also come across a number of different objects that I really just don't know what they are. But some of the big ones I want to talk about are like this one, which is a bogus stamp, also known as a phantom stamp or a fantasy stamp. And these can look like real stamps, but 
There could also be make-believe issues where they supposedly come from non-existent countries or places that do not have a postal system. They could also fall into the category of fakes and forgeries. Now here's a very famous controversial bogus stamp. This depicts a mushroom cloud from the atomic bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki during World War II. Now, the story is that the United States Postal Service was actually going to issue stamps depicting a mushroom cloud back in 1995. It was supposed to be part of a series of stamps that were celebrating the 50th anniversary of the end of World War II. And that particular stamp was supposed to highlight that the atomic bombs hastened the end of the war as so the caption of the stamp was going to say. After the announcement was made, you can imagine that there was an uproar. Uh, Japan was very upset about this, and the White House managed to convince the United States Postal Service to not issue that stamp and do something else. The creation of this bogus stamp was in response to the USPS not issuing the atomic bomb stamp. Several veterans in particular were displeased with that decision, as they saw it was a crucial event that ended the war. And artists created several versions of these bogus stamps, which were then widely circulated. Now, what that brings up is that you can go ahead and make your own bogus or fantasy stamps, which I did. These really neat stamps are from the Philatelic Islands, which is an archipelago probably in the Indian Ocean. But you can see that what I did here was just mess around on my computer and came up with a few images that I then had printed on perforated paper. There are a number of businesses that you can find online that will print out your images on perforated paper to make them look like stamps. Uh, these ones came out really well and I used a company called Your Stamps, which I'll leave the link in the description for you. But you can have a lot of fun with these and really get creative. Let me know about other Cinderella items that exist, but I never came across today. Also, if you found anything interesting in the world of Cinderella philately, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, thanks for watching. See you later.